there's a limited time where you're going to ride BMX, probably, you know. This is your time. Enjoy it. I was a pro BMXer from 1994 till I had my surgery in 2009. I'm up in Houghton, Michigan, and it's a small little town. There's no highway to get here, and not a lot of people know about it, but it's unbelievably beautiful. It's on Lake Superior, and I've been loving the winter. This is my first winter in years. You know, I've lived in Austin, I didn't see snow, and I think it's awesome. I love the snow. Yeah, I mean, Houghton's like a big snowmobiler's destination, and so there's tons of dudes riding around on the weekends, and I haven't got a snowmobile yet, but hopefully next year. I remember being a kid, and bikes, took a hold of me from some of my earliest memories and just were always what I wanted to do. I had a lot of co-sponsors through the years, but my bike sponsors were Standard, Hoffman, T1, and then briefly Giant. Taj, I was at Woodward a couple of weeks ago and we got a bit of a sneak preview of some video footage of you at the South Park uh, Steel City Classics, that NBL jumping thing that went down. You basically tail whipped a set of 29 foot doubles. I was crashing every single jump anyway, so I figured I might as well try that. There it is. I had plenty of time, so I knew I could get close. <laughs> this is my first ever photo, and it was in BMX Plus in like 92 or something. My first interview and ride. It's horrible. I freshly moved to Austin and I was working in a grocery store and I got a call from Matt Hoffman saying, can you come up to Dallas? Mira just got hurt. He had blown up his spleen. Drove up to Dallas and they're like, can you ride a vert? And I'm like, no. <laughs> they're like, well, you're gonna have to. You're doing shows on a vert ramp. And that was it. I had to learn how to ride vert. I feel like I have some 11 plus footers, but like, less than five of those airs, but a couple, you know. Rode vert for a few years, got knocked out all the time, so kind of stopped riding vert. I was just breaking every bike I rode. Box jumps had wedge landings, and that's what I was riding, and I landed like hell, and the back ends of bikes were like 15, 16 inches long. So you'd always break the seat stays right behind the seat post. So when I got on Hoffman, they offered me a chance to do a dirt jumping bike, which was gonna be really, really strong. So we developed the wishbone on the Taj, which was, let's just make every tube intersect there so it's as strong as humanly possible, and, and it worked. They didn't break there. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't save like a lot of different stuff, but I saved that. It counts down to two, and then it stops before one. Because this is the bike I rode right before we started T1. In my mind, that was a hint that T1 was coming, because it doesn't go to one. <laughs> In that era, I guess it was the kind of late 90s, was X Games Fever. He would get sponsors who would say, we'll sponsor you if you promise you're gonna get in the X Games and you're gonna get this much TV time. And I was like, fuck that. BMX is mine. Like, you can't tell me how to ride. Starting T1 for me was being an angsty, pissed off kid and I was trying to express myself. It was this vehicle to say, BMX doesn't have to be winning a competition or being a NASCAR guy. It's what you make it. Anti-establishment, yeah, totally. Like, didn't want to be like those guys. 
it was a business. We had to work really hard at it, but we didn't start it as a business. We started it as a way to put out an alternative view of what BMX could be and say, it doesn't have to be this way. It could be this way. Well, I'd hesitate very strongly to call it art, but I, I draw a lot. I love it. Elephants are, to me, he's this protector, you know? If you had a big elephant standing next to you, you'd feel safe. If he was your bro and he was taking care of you. So that's the idea. He's like this shield. He protects you. I don't know. The rabbit, a lot of times they're holding signs, right? And I like the idea of them having something to say. Well, I got Monty. I got him from a rescue. He's a freaking cartoon already, so I just stretched his nose out a little longer and stretched his ears a little taller and shortened his legs a little bit. And that is just strictly entertainment for me. I laugh so hard drawing the dog. All right, tail whips. I get associated with that trick for sure. I'm left foot forward, but the bike would rotate counterclockwise, meaning I'd kind of have to slide off the back of the bike to kick the back end of the bike to make it spin, rather than most people do it with their back foot and they can kick it around. So that gave it a little different look right there. I never did have them unlocked. That was the thing. I never really trusted my pedals were gonna be where I left them. I think I was probably never better than 70% on tail lips, you know? Like I could crash at any given moment and that's what felt cool about them is I always kept them on the edge. To me, that's what's cool about riding is like when you're really on the edge, whatever it is. It's really hard to pick a favorite photo, but one that really stands out is the 360 wall tap over a spine that Mulligan shot. I was really scared of it, so I did a bunch of like half-assed ones where I just fall down. We ended up filming it later for the forward video, so it's cool to have it on video. And it, one of the things I always really liked about riding was kind of creating new things, and it was something that I made up and hadn't seen anybody else do, so that's the stuff I like. It's just cool when you watch old videos and you see yourself and you think, wow, that's pretty cool. I kind of can't believe that's me. A favorite video clip, one of them that really stands out, I have one in forward, the Ed News forward video, where I do a crank slide on a sub box. And that was a trick that I had never seen anybody else do. And I was really amazed that it worked and stuck to have on tape. I love the Etnies days where I felt like that's probably where I was the most progressive and I was kind of making up new tricks and new things. And I loved even just the end of my riding career where I was mostly just riding T1 ramp by myself, like tons. I really enjoy figuring out all the intricacies and little lines and stuff that maybe people don't even realize you're doing, but it took me a hundred tries and a week to learn. I love that. fell doing an alley-oop grind at the T1 ramp. I landed on one hip and it just made me twist super hard and it tore and ruptured a bunch of discs in my lower back. I don't know, whatever it is since that happened, if I like bunny hop up a curb, I'll be in super sharp pain. So I finally got surgery and they fused my back and however much sports therapy I've had or all these different doctors and all these different things, it just hasn't changed. It was just tough. It had been my life for so long. It was all I thought about was riding bikes and I focused all my energy on it. And then all of a sudden, because of my injury, it was like a light switch. It's just over. The hardest part for me, to be honest, is watching people ride dirt. Like watching people go through rhythm jumps, trails. I thought I'd be able to do that until I was 60, you know, because that seems like something you can do. Cause you don't gotta do a trick. You don't gotta go that high. I had to turn that off because it kind of sucked. That was a challenge. BMX taught me that I can accomplish things, right? I can do stuff. I guess the trick is just learning to apply the same kind of focus you apply to bike riding to something new. I was buttoning a shirt, like trying to dress up to go apply for a job at a bar and my phone rang and it was Odyssey will you come work for us? And I'm like, what am I gonna do? And they're like, we'll figure something out. 
they let me start a fucking blog. Like Fairdale was a blog at first where I would just draw stupid shit and put it on there and they were paying me to do that. Anyway, Fairdale turned into a bike company. It really hit me like, holy cow, I still love this. You can still enjoy bikes without pushing them to the extreme or whatever the hell you want to call it. That's my history is BMX, so I'm totally happy to have those roots carry over into Fairdale. Life is better on a bike than in a car or anything else. I, I really believe that, so. My whole career was cool. I'm happy with what I did. I'm embarrassed by some of the stuff I did, but I'm totally happy with it. Yeah! <laughs> BMX helped me open up and see the world and see life. I was a kid from Michigan who would have never left Michigan, I'm sure, had it not been for BMX. BMX took me everywhere. I met Ellen on her way down from heaven in the middle of a Texan bar. She took me on a ride through the starlit skies, dancing the night away. Up above was in love hanging over me, searching for the wisdom that I knew I'd need. Whoa, Ellen, got a heart big as a deep blue sea.